Hello friends, welcome back to DigiTalk. So as I, I have explained in my previous sessions of WebLogic Server 14.1.2.0, the traditional admin console has been depreciated now and instead of that, we have to use the WebLogic Remote Console tool, right? So WebLogic Remote Console tool is a open source utility from the Oracle, uh, which we can use to access the multiple domains from a single location. Okay, because what, what we know so far is that we have a separate admin console for each and every domain, right? So in case you are going to utilize or use the multiple domains at a time, then you have to open the multiple browsers, multiple consoles from each and every browser. But with the help of this WebLogic Remote Console tool, you can register the multiple WebLogic console from a single location and then you can use it from there. Okay, so uh, how to install that WebLogic Remote Console tool, how to uh, uh, use that, how to register the WebLogic domain with this Remote Console tool. So I have posted few videos earlier. If you are uh, not aware about that one, then you can check the link in the description of this video. Okay, so now specifically in this session, I am going to explain you how to use the Remote Console tool. Okay, and specifically what we are going to do, we will create one Manage Server. Then we will activate the changes. So there are different now, now because this is completely a different tool. So there is different way to create the managed servers. In fact, to create the different resources. Okay. As we have been following with the traditional admin console. So now it's completely different. So in this session, we are going to see how we can create a managed server. Then how we can activate the changes. After that, how to uh, start the managed server and how we can check the progress of the server. So there are completely different options for that one and different navigations for that, which we are going to cover in this short session. Okay, so this will give you at least some overview how to use the WebLogic Remote Console tool. Okay, so this is the main screen of WebLogic Remote Console tool. So I have not registered any of the domain as of now. So I am land up on this page to add admin server connection provider. And then there are multiple options are there and there's a different uh, uh, use for each and every option so that is not required for you as of now because we are going to uh, access the admin console so let me show you this again so uh, this is the shortcut which has been created on my desktop when i have installed this uh, in my windows system okay and if you are in a linux machine then there's a different way for that one how to start the remote console tool in linux and how to access the admin console which i have covered in the previous sessions so let me double click, click on this one so this will initialize the remote console tool okay and if you have not registered any of the domain with this remote console tool then the first screen will be land up on this one so you have to select the default option which is the add admin server connection provider and click on choose and before this you have to make sure your admin server is up and running because this remote console tooling is going to, going to contact your admin server okay and then it will going to display all of the configurations that you have in your domain for the complete end-to-end -end management so let me uh, give a name dev domain so my uh, admin console is up and running this is my uh, server process okay and let me give the username which is weblogic let me give the password so this is a username and password that i have given during the creation of the domain with the help of config.sh or cmd utility right and the port i have given for the admin server is 7002 and this is the secure port okay so i have created the domain in the secure mode okay so for that i am going to give the https and the port number 7002 now this is the secure port but this again come with the demo identity and certificates so this is the option that we have to select make in secure connection so this is only applicable if you are going to create <clears throat> or if you are going to access a domain which you have created with the SSL configurations and specifically with the default SSL configurations. Okay, if you have not configured with the default SSL configurations, then remove this S, provide your port here accordingly, whatever we have, the default is 7001 and do not select this option, which is make insecure connection. So because I have created with the secure connection, so I am going to give it HTTPS and then I have selected the make insecure connection. Click on OK. It will take some time to connect to your domain and now you can see that i am land up on the screen where you have a different tabs okay edit tree configuration view tree monitoring tree security data tree okay so this we are going to cover in detail in them uh, in in some future sessions so as of today what i'm going to uh, show you how to create a managed server how to activate the changes how to start the server and how to check the progress of that one right so to create any of the resources with the help of remote console tool you have to select the edit tree 
okay so if you see there's a uh, tab on the right hand side which is the providers if you click on the providers so here you are you can see that it is showing as a dev domain right so because i have registered only the one domain here similarly if you have a multiple domain that you would like to register here okay so for that you have to click on this option okay the, and then select the first which is add admin server connection provider and here you can provide the details and you can give a name here okay similarly you can register the multiple domains here so that means with the help of this remote console tool you can register the multiple domains and then you can access the domain from this particular locations so whenever uh, the, the the domain that you are going to register it will be listed here okay and to access the different domains from this single location you can just click on the domain name and the corresponding domain will be listed here that means you can able to manage multiple domains from the single location right so let me close this one so i'm going to create a manage server so for that i have to go to edit tree and if you see click see on the right, left hand side okay all these four options are here as well this is the first one is the edit tree second is the configuration view tree this is the monitoring tree and the key, this is the security data tree okay so either you can go from here okay or either you can go to home and then click on edit tree both are same so now because we are going to uh, create the manage server so for creating a resource we have to go to edit tree because we are going to edit the tree right so click on this one and inside the environments this is the same structure that we have in the traditional domain environments inside the environment you have an option called servers click on the server so here you can see the default configuration there is one admin server and there is one manage server okay this manage server is inside the cluster cluster one and there is a machine with the name of machine underscore one with where the listen address of the manage server is 7003 which is a non-secure port and 8003 which is the ssl listen port right so now uh, we are going to create a new server so for that you have to click on the new but before that let me show you one more thing as well if you go to the monitoring tree okay and monitoring you will see the same structured the tree which you which we have seen inside the edit okay and this is specifically only for the monitoring of the resources so if you go to monitoring tree click on environments and click on servers then here you can see the status of the servers so admin server is up and running manage server is unreachable that means it is not running okay and here you can see the option start resume suspend shut down restart ssl so these are the option to start stop and do the certain kind of operations with respect to the manage servers or the admin server right so now you understand if you are creating any of the resources for that you have to go to the edit tree for example you can create a manage servers if you are going to start the manage server that we have created inside the edit tree for that you have to go to the this particular which is the monitoring tree okay so inside the monitoring tree go to the environments click on servers and here you can see the server name and if you would like to start stop any server then click on that particular server and then here you can select the option start resume suspend shut down we can do the operations from here right so let me again go back to the edit tree let me go to environments servers and here i am going to create a manage server so i will click on new so i have to give a name for the server so let me give the manage ms underscore two okay so now here we have to select the option copy settings from another server okay so mostly what happen is that when we create a managed server we don't need to specify the different kind of a configuration that we have to specify for the server okay so mostly when we create a managed server specifically we uh, create it in a cluster and if we if we already have a managed server in the cluster so for that you can select the already existing managed server so what will happen that it will automatically select all of the configurations and settings that you have assigned to this particular managed server it will automatically assign to the newly created managed server as well okay so in this way you will not see any kind of a disparity between the configurations between the different managed servers okay which we face as of today in with the traditional uh, uh, admin console where sometimes you will see that some of the configurations are different for one of the managed servers and it is diff completely different for another managed server so you don't need to worry about that one now you have to select only the the managed server and the configurations all the configurations of that particular managed server will get replicated to your new managed server so here i'm going to create a managed server with the name of ms underscore two and then it will select all of the configurations of the existing managed server which is ms underscore one okay so click on create okay so now you can see that the managed server 2 has been created okay these are the configurations of the managed server okay and all of the configurations have already been replicated from the managed server 1 okay so now only one thing that you have to notice here while because it has taken all of the configurations of the managed server 1 so it has automatically taken the port as well right so we know that we can't start the 
the different services on same pod on same server right so if this managed server is again on the same machine where you have the initial first managed server so you have to make sure that you are going to change the port here right so now because we know that the managed server one is running on uh, the secure port which is 8003 and this is the second managed server that has been created so what i can do i can change the port here as 8004 right and apart from that you don't need to change anything like you, have a, you can see here you have a different kind of a tabs and there are different kind of a settings inside each and every tab right and all of the settings and configurations had already been taken care uh, by replicating it from the manager server one right so we have created the manager server and we have changed the port to 8004 so i have not enabled the non-secure port so it is disabled if you would like to enable then you can enable it from here as well okay so now i have created the manager server right now i have to activate the changes so what is the option to activate the changes here you can see a cart option here click to view shopping cart actions if you click on this one you can see the option discard changes and commit changes so if you will click on the discard changes that means the whatever the changes that you have done it will all be discarded if you will click on the commit change then the changes will get committed okay so now as of now what i have done i have created the manage server in the edit tree but i have not activated that means i have not committed the changes so now if you if i go to inside the monitoring okay and if i go to the environment and then i will go to servers then the server will not display here i can see only the manage server one not the manage server two the reason is that i have not committed the changes with which i have done inside the edit tree right let me go back here again let me click on server so here i have managed server 2 created right so now let me commit the changes now you can see the changes were committed successfully okay so now again if i go back to the monitoring and then environment and then servers so now i can able to see the managed server 2 here right so now this is a way how you can create a managed server with the help of remote console tool inside the edit tree and how to activate the changes how to commit the changes after after creating the resources now if you would like to start this okay for that as i said you have to come to the monitoring tree okay you can go to the home and then you can again come from monitoring tree from here as well otherwise you can directly click on the left hand side icons the third one is the monitoring tree you can to go to environments servers click on the server for example we have created the manage server 2 and then click on the start so once you will click on the start then you will see a message created a task for ms2 so that means whenever you are going to start any of the server it will create a task for you okay now how to monitor this task which has been created to start this manage server for that you can scroll down and here at the last you will see an option called dashboard click on dashboard okay here you will see option server task right so now here you can see that the ms12 server start field ms2 server start processing so now this is the ms2 server which we are going to start right so it is under processing progress that means processing so click on this one so once you will click on this one then you will see the start time and end time okay operation progress and if you would like to see the advanced fields you can click on this option okay and then you can see here the status is task completed okay and then the progress is success so this is the way uh, how you can monitor the task the important thing here to notice that when you start any of the server it will create a corresponding task for that one as i shown to you right so now here you can see manage server is up and running so when we clicked on the start it created a task for this particular task where we initiated the starting and to check the progress of the task you have to go scroll down and come to the dashboard menu click on dashboard and inside that you will see a tab called server task click on server task here you can click on that particular task this is the task that we have initiated the progress is success that means it has been completed successfully and here are some different parameters of the task and if you click on the show advanced field it will show you some more advanced field that you can use to check the status of your managed server right and apart from that as usual you can go to domain servers and the name of your server where you find the different log files of the servers okay and you can check the status in the log file as well okay so now this is how you can register a domain in your remote console tool how you can utilize the edit tree option to create the resources for example manage server that we have created and how to activate or how to commit the changes and then how you can monitor or how you can start stop the services and there is a corresponding task that has been created which you can check inside the dashboard option 
so hope you have got some good understanding of how to utilize this remote console tool so in the next subsequent sessions i am going to cover few more interesting topics with respect to the remote console tool thank you